Hi, I welcome you all to this session on axial flow compressor. In the previous lecture, we discussed about the different velocity vectors and how it can be defined for rotor inlet, rotor exit and the stator inlet in a compressor stage. We also understood uh, the relationship between the various velocity vectors u, c and w where u is the peripheral velocity of the uh, rotor blade and c is the absolute velocity and w is the relative velocity between uh, c and u. So today in this session we will apply those concepts into developing a relationship for uh, work required by the compressor blade stage and uh, how we can proceed with those concepts further. Right. We will we'll also discuss about the work done factor uh, that will hamper the work absorbing capacity of the compressor blades. Okay, So let's get into it. Alright, so basically compressor requires work to compress the air. right? And who provides work to the compressor or power to the compressor? The turbine blades, right? So if this is a typical jet engine, we have compressor and that is connected via shaft to the turbine blades. Now turbine blades, when it generates the power by expanding the gases, right? So it generates power and that power is given to the compressor blade to compress the air. Now it's a cyclic process, right? So only when the turbine blades generate the power, that power is being transferred to the compressor and compressor compresses the air. Now my question to you is, to run the compressor, turbine should run, turbine should expand the gases, but uh, to run the compressor, air should be compressed. For the turbine to expand the gases, compressed air should be sent to the turbine. Now getting the point, so the problem here is in order to run the turbine, we need to run the compressor, but to run the compressor, I need turbine to generate the power. So at this point, you can pause the video and think about the problem and note it down, note down the solution. I will discuss the answer in few seconds. All right. I hope you got the answer, right? So for turbine to generate power, I need to run the compressor. For the compressor to run, turbine should generate power. Now, initially the jet engines are started in aircraft using something called as auxiliary power unit. APU or generators that are uh, stationed at the ground. So that is being connected to the engine and the shaft is rotated and once the engine starts, once the compressor starts, the compressor compresses the air, sends the compressed air to the turbine and turbine blades will expand and by this way turbine generates power and the APU is removed. Right, actually uh, auxiliary power unit is removed from the engine and then engine starts its working. It is not uh, as simple as a, how we start the car. You put in the key and just you switch it on. So that is in automobiles, but uh, the aircraft engines are started with the help of auxiliary power unit, right? So uh, once you understand the concept of power from where the compressor is getting, we will dive into the uh, work analysis. So uh, we will discuss in this session, uh, what are the requirements for the compressor to generate uh, or to develop work efficiently. So for this, we need to assume, right? There are few assumptions. The first assumption is that we uh, assume that the axial velocity remains constant throughout the axial flow compressor stage. Okay, uh, so if I assume this, the analysis becomes pretty simple. Uh, that is the reason we are doing this assumption in the initial design phase. Okay, later on, we when we go for the detailed design, 
we will remove this assumption and we will go for uh, more sophisticated analysis the second assumption is uh, for the cross section we assume it as converging because the air is getting compressed the pressure is increasing in every stage so we don't want to lose that increased pressure we need to hold that increased pressure after each stage so we reduce the area to keep uh, the increased pressure intact right so with these two assumptions we will proceed to derive the equation for work so uh, from the previous lectures from equation 7 and 13 i can represent the peripheral velocity of the blade as ca tan alpha 1 plus beta 1 and also as ca tan alpha 2 plus tan beta 2 now also from the energy equation in the previous uh, discussions in the basic of uh, rotating machines we can understand that the work input is given as u multiplied by the tangential component of axial velocity difference okay so that is c21 minus ct1 and if i represent these uh, velocity vectors in terms of uh, air angles i get ca tan alpha 2 minus ca tan alpha 1 right and since the axial velocity is constant i'm going to take out uh, ca common from this equation so finally i get the equation number 17 which talks about the work input required by the compressor blade stage in terms of air angles that is alpha 1 and alpha 2 they are called as absolute air angles similarly i can represent equation 17 in terms of blade angles because we already got a relationship between air angles and blade angles so i use that relation and i get equation number 18 which tells the work required by the compressor blade in terms of relative air angles or we call it as blade angles beta 1 and beta 2 let's call this as equation number 18 moving on from the initial uh, analysis of rotating machines we have uh, for rotating machines the energy absorbing capacity or the energy uh, developing capacity is given by this equation that is half multiplied by c1 square minus c2 square u1 square minus u2 square and w2 square minus w1 square now equation number 19 is a general equation energy equation for all the rotating machines whether it is compressor blowers fans turbines so whatever rotating machine is there so it is uh, constant the energy equation is constant for any machine and now we will try to apply it for axial flow compressors now for axial flow compressor as we discussed in the previous lecture u1 is equal to u2 right means the blade velocity in the leading edge and trailing edge remains constant now if that is the case from this equation number 19 the second term would become zero right so we are only left with the absolute velocity difference means the kinetic energy change uh, in the absolute uh, velocity of the air and the kinetic energy change in the uh, relative velocity that is w1 and w2 equation number 20 represents uh, the work absorbing capacity of an axial flow compressor in terms of velocity vector right so velocity vectors in this case are absolute velocity and the relative velocity right c and w c1 represents the absolute velocity at the rotor inlet c2 represents the absolute velocity at the rotor exit similarly w1 and w2 represents the swirl velocity right now when i talk about uh, the compressor and uh, i want to define the efficiency of a compressor i mean if i want a higher efficiency uh, or more efficient compressor blade stage that means it should compress the air with the minimum work right so that is the idea behind uh, the more efficient compressor blade correct it's very logical if i want more compression with minimum work then i call it as more efficient you know compressor blade design right so this equation tells that 
in the next session we will discuss about the efficiency of an axial flow compressor and how we can derive an equation for that and uh, we will see the related concepts thank you